you know, forget all of it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you guys something. I grew up on Killer Cobra. When I got saved and got filled with the Holy Spirit, that's who I started listening to. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mal uh, what is his name? Uh, Papa Cirillo. Mark Cirillo. Mm -hmm. I used to go to his meetings, man, and see people jump out of wheelchairs. People get healed. Wow. People get delivered. Sending them, you see angels flying through the air. Oh, I mean, you can, I mean, your, your spiritual eyes open up, and you see in all kinds of yeah, miracles they play. Yeah. Bones, legs growing out. People getting delivered. People getting set free. Yeah. And I remember sitting up in that service saying to myself, I said, God, if you can do it for Papa Cirillo, you can do it for me. And I said, Lord, I, I want to walk in this kind of anointing. Yeah. And, and you know what? And that's why I thank God for the old preachers. I like the old preachers yeah. because they believe in fasting. They believe in praying. And, and this, this new age church think that everything, you just get everything by faith. How many know you got a labor? You got to fast, you got to pray, you, you got to spend time in the presence of God to get those type of anointing. It ain't going to come because you can read your Bible and get information. Information don't anoint you. Right. Come on now, Jesus. Because you got a lot of people that know the Bible. I meet people all the time. They got doctor degrees and, and, and got all these PhDs and they dead as a dough now. Ain't no power, ain't no deliverance. And, and, and there's nothing in them. And how many know that the church is not just supposed to be a place of knowledge? But if Paul said, for the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power and in demonstration. How many know that, that there should be a manifestation of power in the church? The Bible said we ought to heal the sick. We ought to raise the dead. We ought to cast out demons. The church should be a place of empowerment when people come here. They shouldn't leave the same way they came. That's right. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm expecting God to do something supernatural. Amen. Amen. In 2018, I'm believing God that the dead are going to be raised. Amen. 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 That the sick are going to be healed. I'm believing God for the supernatural release of his presence in this last hour. How many want God to, want to, God to use it? So that means you got to get yourself in a position where he can. Amen. Now we know the first thing we need is the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that? Yes. Amen. Uh, I'm going to get y'all out of here. Y'all give me a minute here. <laughs> there are two little things in which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fleed from for refuge to, to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as a, listen to this, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. How many know this, this hope? Hope is expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The group of efforts. It is it's expectation. I like the way, uh, what, what her name, Marilyn Hickley said. She said, hope is like a rope hanging from heaven. You got something to hold on to. I like that. Amen. You know, th th that's what hope is. It's an expectation. It's believing. And he said, this hope is an anchor for your soul. Let me ask you something. And, and I just said, sometimes I said a thing. Think about it. When you go out there on that water fishing, what do you use an anchor to do? To hold that boat in place, don't you? So when the storms, when the wind rise and come up, that, that boat may rock because you got that anchor is it, in the water. And then that anchor is set there to hold it in place. I don't, and, 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 you know, of course, if it get too bad, you know you got to get up and go down if you're in a little boat. But, but, but the purpose of it is to hold it in place. So he says here, he says hope is the anchor of the soul. So if you got hope, you got something to keep you up. You have an expectation. You expect the future. You expect God to do something. And anytime you find a church that don't have no joy, don't have no peace, don't have no expectation, you, you ain't got nothing to go hold you back, hold you up. Sooner or later you're gonna sink if you don't have this anchor on the inside of you. And the Bible said Christ in you is what? The hope of glory. And then if you got Christ on the inside of you, he's the anchor of the soul. He's the anchor of the soul. How I many you don't need an anchor for your spirit? You need an anchor for your soul. Yeah, Jesus. It's your emotions and stuff that mess you up most of the time. Mm -hmm. Your feelings. Mm -hmm. Your body. Yeah, yes. but, but, but he says here, and that means, and, and even when my body acting up, God, I have hope. Amen. I said, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes I'm walking and my back start hurting. I said, ooh. I said, the name of Jesus, they don't even lie. I repeat this and I keep on going. And eventually that pain will just go. Amen. But, but how many know you got to take authority over? Amen. You got to call those things which be not as though they were. Amen. Amen. And so he says here, he, he said, hope is the anchor of the soul. He said, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul? Both sure. But God be putting some words in there, don't he? <laughs> he trying to give us confidence. Both sure and, and listen to this, and stop fans. Wow. <laughs> now you tell me something. Why are we worried about life? Jesus. Some people can't sleep. Worrying about their children, worrying about everything that's going on in life. God said he'll save your household. Mm -hmm. 
Come on now. Amen. He said he'll save your wife. He'll save your children. Amen. He'll deliver them. He'll bless them. Yeah. I mean, no, that, that you, you just got to hold on to your hope. Amen. And I found this out. Just before peace, you're going to go through a whole lot of hell. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, you go to church, you, well, you get to know Jesus, everything ain't going to be all right. Mm -hmm. It will. But you better believe, <laughs> to get to know Jesus, you're going to go through some tests. Mm -hmm. We preach this feel-good gospel. It's always going to be, uh, and, and you're supposed to be happy. I ain't telling you you're not supposed to be happy. But what I'm telling you is this, you're going to go through tests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to fight with your emotions. How I many you know you got to fight? Sometimes I got to wrestle with my emotions. Now, sometimes my emotions tell me, it, it just ain't going to happen. It just ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I have to wrestle it to the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like Jacob with the angel. Yes. Say, I ain't going to let you go till you bless you. I know sometimes, sometimes you got to wrestle that devil down. You got to let him know that's that negative thought. Listen, I don't care what you say. God, you said you're going to save my family. You're going to save my wife. You're going to save my children. You're going to bless me. You're going to prosper me. And I'm going to stand on the word of God. And, and listen to this. Sometimes in order for something to live, it must die. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we look at things because they seem like they're dead. Mm. We think it's not working. Mm. How many know God can't revive anything that's not dead? That's right. Oh, Amen. come on now. Jesus. And I feel this in my script. There may be some things that seem like it's dead, like it's not operating, like it's not alive, that it has no life in it. But I'm prophesying to you tonight. God is saying what seems dead, he's going to resurrect it for you. He's going to bring life to it. But you got to believe it, okay? Whether that's in your family, whether that's in your finances, whether that's in your marriage, whatever it may be, God is saying, listen, don't, don't, don't give up. Because the Bible even said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it abides alone. But, but when you plant it, guess what happens? It's going to reproduce. Yeah. And he was really talking about Jesus mm -hmm. and the resurrection. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In order for us to live, something had to die. Mm -hmm. Come on, yes. man. Yes. It's the same way in your life right now. Mm -hmm. In order for Jesus to live in you, something gonna have to die. That's right, yes. man. Yes. And how I many you know that's the hard part about life is letting go of things. Right. Amen. That's what we call death. We don't mean literally dying. What we mean is you letting things go that are not like Jesus. You, 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 you're changing every single day. You know, people say, the Bible said, cut your right hand off and you cut it off. Well, why would you cut? Some people go cut their hand off. Hey, man, you, you don't cut your head off, man. Um, no. You take that word. That's what I do. If, I'm, if I got something I need to overcome, I take that word. I take that sword and I begin to speak to that area of my life. Yes, Amen. Because the Bible said the word of God is sharp and quick and powerful than yes. any two-headed sword, Hebrews 4 and 12. So that word will cut out. It'll, it'll cut. It'll divide. It'll separate. It'll let you know what's spirit and what's flesh. So when you speak that word, it'll cut out everything that's not like God. Amen. And sometimes I think God asks the question, but Victor, do they really want to let it go? Yes. You know, some people like their demons. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Thank you. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I cast a demon out of man one time. He went back and got it. <laughs> Amen. Now I said to myself, I said, God ain't praying for him no more. Because <laughs> he liked it. That's right. That's right. And the Bible said when you cast the evil yeah, spirit out, right. he gonna leave. But when he come back up to hell, the Bible said he's gonna bring seven more worse, seven more demons, and the state of that man gonna be worse than the first. That's right. That's the word. Now this is just a word of caution to all y'all born again, holy ghost filled people. Don't run around trying to pray for everybody. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. Sometimes you cast the spirits out of folk that don't want to change, and we get them in a worse condition than they are. So we gotta pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom on how to deal with people. You really do? Well, no, that's I, I was in Tuscaloosa at my apostle church. And we're going to get ready. Y'all, I'm going to get y'all we I was at my apostle church. And, and I come in to visit. And he going to, and I, so I come sit on the front row. I'm coming to get, to, to get priesthood. <laughs> that's right. And a young man come up and tell my, you know, he's 90 years old now. But he's still preaching. So he looked at me. He said, he said, priest and prophet, get up and come on up here. He said, I, I, I got a job for you today. <laughs> and so I, I give him that look like really uh -huh. Pastor I didn't want to go I'm going to give him come up here 
But of course I got up. He said, I want you to pray for this young man over here. I said, okay, daddy. So I said, I said, come on over here so we can pray for you. And I, I said, what's going on with you? And when he came, my eyes got big. <laughs> because how I many with some demons? Oh, yeah. That she really don't want to fool with? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Jesus told the disciples, don't rejoice because you cast out demons. Rejoice rather that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Yeah. Some people are excited. I want to cast out demons. I want to oh. heal the sick. Well, you don't know what you're about to get yourself into. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it ain't fun at all. And I would tell anybody, I don't want to do it. But I do it because I'm anointed to do it. Right. That's right. Amen. But this young man come up and he said, I'm fighting. He said, I'm fighting a homosexual spirit. And I need you to pray for me. I want to be delivered. Now, in my pastor church, he got about 10 preachers, okay? <laughs> All of them lined up around the pastor. <laughs> and so this young man come up and I said, I said, do me a favor. I said, lift your hands for me. We're going to pray oh, for you. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I laid my hands on this man. Boom, he hit the floor. And all of a sudden, that deep voice came up out of him and started talking. All the preachers gone. <laughs> they run out the door. All of them run. Run to the back room. Go hide. They, 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 they don't want to help me. Ooh, you got the truth. You sure I know. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm saying, God, these going to be Holy Ghost filled preacher and all y'all running. Right. Oh, yes. And I didn't want to fool with that demon either. <laughs> Well, the one I cast that demon out of that man, that man went through deliverance. Mm -hmm. and, and from this day forward, he's one of my, he, he's, he's a good, he support me all the time. He's, and, and cause he, you know, he worked for IBM, one of these carpenters, he, he traveled and do computers and stuff. He said, bring all your computers to me. He said, whatever you need some, I can get them for you. He, he don't get no big price for it. He said, and, and, you know, most of the time when I go to him, he'll give it to me. He said, honey, you just take this. I want to bless you. You know, you like your apostle, man. You took me through deliverance. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I cast that demon out that dude. That demon followed me home. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I told Pastor. <laughs> I didn't want to mess with this dude. <laughs> and let me tell y'all something. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Right. Don't get too anxious. Mm -hmm. To do all this stuff. Because how many know when it's time for it to happen, it's going to come to you, you ain't going to have to look for it. That's right, man. And in this hour, you ain't going to have to look for it. It's coming to you, right? It's going to show up. Don't go, let God prepare you for what's about to come. Don't go out there and try to find it. I'm telling y'all, people think, hey man, for almost for a whole year or two, People was coming back to New Beginners Worship Center. I was taking people through deliverance. I was, it seemed like I said to myself, I said, God, it seemed like God, all I'm doing is casting out demons. People getting set free. It was everybody was coming to see. People was coming from everywhere. We well, want you to get delivered. Send an appointment. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I'm getting tired. You got to give me some help. I'm getting tired of casting all these spirits out these folks. Hey, Amen. I'm coming in and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, brother, you, you ever seen the exorcist? I thought I had seen some stuff. I'm seeing people oh. levitate off floors. I'm seeing people look at doors and locks jump off doors. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff. I'm sitting there, women with some of the beautiful faces and some of the nasty stuff coming up out of them, and vice versa, men too. And I'm going to myself, I'm going, I said, Jesus, I never would have thought she had that. <laughs> Jesus. Deliverance ministry is real. It's real, and it ain't nothing to play with. Right. And I'm telling you, right. some people want things to be seen. And, and let me, I'm warning you now, I'm warning you. Don't be in a hurry. Because, let me know, you got enough going on now. Now, tell me you got enough going on now. Don't, don't, don't rush nothing. Now, I ain't telling you don't, don't operate and deliver it, but what I'm telling you is be led by the Holy Spirit. Right? Amen. Right. Right. The Bible said be anxious for nothing, but in all things of what? Prayer and supplication. Now, God, if it's your will, then you let me operate. Yes. And see, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I tell, I tell these, these preachers, they want, I, I want to go, I want to go help you. You, you just think you want to go help you. <laughs> and I tell them, I, I have, I've had, I had traditional preachers say, I'm going to come and join you and help you, Pastor. We're going to go with you. I said, I said, brother, you know, kind of like John the Baptist, his disciples, and Jesus, and here, they want to follow Jesus because they see what he's doing. Jesus told them to listen, listen, you go back to John. Mm -hmm. 
That's your order. That's your call. Yeah. How many know everybody ain't called to walk with you? That's right. That's right. And that's why I tell people I don't get mad if you leave because everybody ain't called to walk with you. Some people you just call to help. That's right. Everybody ain't called to walk with you. And how many know Jesus only had 12? Mm -hmm. And he turned the world upside down. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I tell people I don't get caught up in a crowd. I, amen. I, amen. I, I don't get caught up in the crowd. But I want to see what you're walking in. I want to see your character. I want to see your nature. And Pastor Bond, let me hurry up. I'm going to quit. Oh, you good? Uh-huh. Keep going. The one who gave me that look. Amen. No, keep going. She knows this. I mean, sometimes they'll, they'll give me a look. And I know, you know, Pastor Bond, you, you, you're preaching, you know. Amen. That, that's fine. Amen. <laughs> don't y'all pay no attention to me. Amen. That by two beautiful things in which it was impossible for God to lie, that he might have a strong constellation who have laid for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure, stuck fast, which, which, enter, which entering, oh my God, let me slow down again. That's right. Slow down, slow down. Because y'all need to catch this last part. For which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and stuck fast, and which enters into that within the veil. Do, do, do y'all know where your faith and your hope takes you beyond the natural into the supernatural. The Bible says in Christ the veil has been lifted. Yeah. Do y'all really know what that means? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means that the heavens has been stretched open. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Now you can walk in. Thank you, Jesus. And we sit around waiting for the preacher, waiting for the prophet. Some of them waiting for the, what you call them, the bishops and the... The, the, the priest, when God said he ripped the temple, amen, he, he, amen, it, it's open. All you got to do is walk in, and you can come boldly to the throne of grace amen. to find what you, to find help you need in the time of trouble. So, so now you, the veil has been ripped. You can go right into the presence of God. You can sit in his presence. How many know in the Old Testament, you died when you came into the presence of God if you were declared righteous or holy? But now because of the blood of Jesus, we can go, we, we, we can we can walk right into the throne room of God. Yes. Isn't that something? He said to find help. He didn't say to judge you and send you to hell. He said to find help in the time of need. So he said, whenever you need help, ascend into the heavens. Come before my throne. To find help in the time of trouble. How many know that, that you have a right to come before the throne and get whatever you need whenever you need it? Y'all hear me? The heavens are open. All right, I hear you. Amen. All you got to do is walk in. And God said, guess what? He said, you can come bold and you can come with confidence. You ain't got to come like, you know, you, you ain't worthy. He said, I've made you worthy. Now you can come and you can stand before me. Because you know in the Old Testament, if you came before a king and you would announce and you would, amen, hey, they would kill you. But, but what Jesus did, he made peace with God. And so now when we come before his presence, guess what? We don't, we don't die, amen, because of our unrighteousness and our sin. Because when he sees us, he sees the righteousness of God in amen, Christ Jesus. It. And so guess what happened? Death has to step out the way. And oh, Robbie even said that. Amen. Death don't even have the most dominion over you. Why? Because Jesus defeated amen. death and sin for you. Amen. Boy, God. We and you know that Apostle Mitchell said that. He said we load it. We got an eight cylinder car, but we drive it on two. Is that what he said last time? <laughs> we, we, we got everything we need, but we only functioning in two percent of it. We, we ain't operating everything that God has for us. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So God don't want you. To, God said, "Listen, I'm, I'm calling y'all out of, amen, out of." Amen. Out of this, this this level of fleshly ministry into a place of the heavenly ministry. That's it. That's it. Good. What do y'all like? I, I, I would like to work. Sometimes I wake up and God just be talking to me. That's good, amen. And y'all, you know what? It ain't nothing deep about it. It's just my daddy talking to me. He'll just, and, and, and y'all know like the old prophet, sometimes God will send a word in my sleep and wake me up in the morning. Yeah. Say, Victor, this is what I want you to do. This is how it's going to go. This is what I want you to do. This is how this is going to go. And so you do this. And sometimes God will just wake me up out of my sleep. 
God, God, and I'm going to tell you this, and we're going to go in just a minute. But God, and I keep saying that, don't you? God said to me, he, he, God showed me my whole future. Uh -huh. Told me everything I'm going to be doing. Mm. And I said, God, okay. Now I got to wait, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where it get hard. That the process is what hurts us. Oh, come on now. Come on now. I saw a lot of good things, but he didn't tell me all this other stuff was going to happen. <laughs> that, that, that's where we get sidetracked at. He, he don't tell you your family going to act a fool. He don't tell you all this going to happen, all that going to happen. You're going to lose some stuff. Some things going to get rough. God, God going to tell you all that because that's a part of the processing. If you endure the process, that's when you get the promise. So don't die in the process because the process is ain't, it's not the promise. We act like what we're going through is permanent. When the Bible says what you're going through is temper, it's not eternal. It's subject to change. We're, I mean, we're looking at our circumstances like they're forever. Yeah. Oh, my God. But the Bible calls your problem a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. So why is it we get towed up, Patty? Hallelujah. <laughs> over temporary stuff. <laughs> now, y'all, I'm going to close this. <laughs> Now, I'm a word person. I got to read one more scripture. Though. <laughs> because I believe, I, I got to give you half of what God gave me if I, if I don't give it all to you. Romans 4. Because we got another night. Rome was built in the night, wasn't it? Amen. So, so let, let, let me read this for you. Wow. Let, let, let's start with uh, Romans 4. Let's start with verse 17. And then we're going to get out of here. Thank you, God. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Wow, God talking to Abraham before it happens. Let me know God will call you something before you become it. Amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickens the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoke. Now listen to this. God called Abraham a father of many nations even before he had a son. That's right. Yes. And let me tell you, you can't listen to people. Huh? Here go Abraham's wife said, go get, go, 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 amen. Go, go tell him to go get, what's her name? Uh, hey, God. Hey, God. You go get her, go, go get, get her. I can't handle no baby. I'm too old. First time I ever heard a woman giving her husband away. Uh -huh. but, but she, he, she gave her husband away. And, and then she's going to get mad <laughs> after you have a baby with her. <laughs> and not only that, his mistake marked his, his, his blessing. Y'all remember when, when, when uh, Isaac and Ishmael was outside playing? And Ishmael was laughing and marking uh, Isaac, laughing at him, picking on him. And Sarah was looking out there and she told, she told Abraham, Abraham, get her, put her out right now. We, 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 do, we do the mess and then we want to put him out. And then, <laughs> put, him, put him out. Put her and her child out. Put him out right now. Abraham was mad, man. What you mean put my, I don't care if it's by another woman, if it's your child, you love your child, don't you? So she was asking Abraham to do something and that, 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 that meant something to him. It didn't mean that to her because it didn't come out of her. But how do you know? She the one forced him into doing it. So you got to be careful that, that you don't allow the enemy to force you to get into stuff and you create problems that eventually will mark your promise. Because you got you to remember this now. Ishmael was not the promised child. So when God did bless Isaac, he also had to bless Ishmael. He sure did. And now you look at the nation of Israel, you look at the Arabs, brothers and sisters fighting over the, the promised land. And it was prophesied over Ishmael that he would be like a wild ass and his hands would be for war. Mm -hmm. I mean, when God speaks something, come to pass. Amen. Why do you think them folks over there, they can, they, they can pick rocks up and throw them at a tank? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be crazy, don't you? <laughs> Ain't no way in the world I'm going to take a knife to a good fight. That just, you, know, you know what I mean? That, that's crazy. You got to have some kind of mentality yeah. to go out and do that. But it was prophesied that, that they would be that way. Mm -hmm. Jesus. 
So a lot of things we see happening in this world, God prophesied that it would happen. God prophesied it. But Sarah, she's going to tell him, go get Israel. Amen. Which Ishmael represented the law. Isaac represented grace. Which represented Jesus. And having a we on the grace and we're not under the law. Amen. 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 Let, let me hurry up so I can get y'all out of here. And as it is written, I have made their father many nations before him, who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope. Everything was against Abraham. He was 99 years old, almost 100, and his wife was up in age. All the circumstances of life was against him. But who against hope believed in hope. Regardless of the circumstances, Abraham yet believed God. How many know sometimes it's going to look like ain't no way it's going to happen? God ain't smart enough. God, I can't do this. I can't do that. But, but how many know it ain't based upon your ability? Amen. But it's based upon the promise. Amen. And that means if God got to go against nature to bless you, he'll do it. Oh, come on. He did, did he do it with the disciples? And I'm gonna just throw some stuff in. He did it with the disciples when Peter and them had to pay taxes. Je Jesus, Jesus told Peter, go to the water. And the first fish come up when he opened his mouth. Put your hand in his mouth and you're gonna find a piece of money to go pay our taxes. Uh, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus speaks. Mm. And, and that, that, that amazes me. Do y'all know? I ain't gonna go there. That's just going to let, let me go ahead and stay focused and get us out of here. Who against hope, believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. This is the verse 18. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Who being not weak in faith, considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, now that he had the deadness of Sarah's womb. How many know sometimes you can't even consider what's going on? All right. Mm -hmm. You just got to believe God. Because yeah. I, mean, I tell people that your circumstances sometimes can talk to you louder than God. Mm -hmm. Glory. Yeah. That's true. Your circumstances tell you, ain't no way we're going to come out of this thing. God, it seems like we're going to lose everything. Like, like ain't nothing going to work out. But, but, but how we know that? That Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. And let me know that God has already fulfilled this word concerning Abraham. And so God's not a man that he should lie. And if God said it, God is going to do it. Amen? God got, God got a good track record. God don't lie. Okay? So you can trust that God's going to bring, bring you to pass. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he, consent. he didn't even consent. He didn't even, being, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. Now that he had the deadness of several moons, and listen to this verse, verse 20. Listen to this. He staggered not hmm. at the promises of God through unbelief, mm -hmm. but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded, that what he had promised, I like this, he was able also to perform. My Lord. Wow, how many know that God performed his work? Yes. And, and all God wants is just a little faith from us. Amen. If we believe the word of God, God, God will bring it to pass. Yes, he will. And, 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 and again, God, God said, listen, I don't change. All right. If I made a promise to you, I'm going to do what I said. Lord. Amen. Let, let, let us stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. I like that time right there. That just looks so good to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Six o'clock actually worked out pretty good for me. Amen. <laughs> l l listen, if you need prayer, we want to pray for you tonight. Amen. The Bible said that, you know, uh -uh, two or three of us touching the green, asking anything mm -hmm. that the Lord would do. So, so tonight we're going to give you an opportunity if you need prayer. And I, you, you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to do.